everyone! This is Skylar from Unicorns and Typewriters. Welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you a bit more about Asian Readathon as well as talk about an exciting book haul that I got that all has to do with the Readathon as well. I'm really excited to say that I am now fully participating in Asian Readathon 2020. So the first book that I started reading for Asian Readathon is Huntress by Melinda Lowe. So I talked in my May video about how I have read her other book, Ash, and I really loved it. It's kind of a very different Cinderella retelling. And now I started reading this, and I didn't even realize from the back cover that this also includes some dark fairies, which is something that I've been really interested in recently, especially after reading the Cruel Prince series this year. And so I'm having a lot of fun with this book. It is really dark so far. I'm not even halfway through, which is pretty bad considering where we are in May, but I'm trying my best. So I hope that I will be doing better soon. It's been a bit of a hard month for me. So I'm just going to do the best I can to fully participate. But I'm hoping my reading will pick up soon. I don't know, there's dark fairies, there's a romance there. It's got these sort of um, last airbender kind of vibes to me with the two main characters and the training they've been through and this journey they're going on. I'm really, really excited to keep reading this book and find out how everything is going to work out and come together at the end. I also spoke in that May video about how I will continue reading Miracle Girls, which is the manga I'm reading. I'm going to try to read at least a couple more of these this month, as well as perhaps read some of the other manga that I've been waiting to read for a while. So I'm hoping whenever I have any spare time or I just need a break from my novels, I'm just going to delve into some manga to get some other reads in. And also, I should have mentioned before that Huntress is by an author of Chinese descent and obviously most manga books, I think all manga books, I'm pretty sure it's a requirement, are written by Japanese authors. I also have been thinking about this book a lot recently and I decided maybe I would reread it for the Asian Readathon. It is a book that I read for the first time last year and I just fell in love with it and that is Milk and Honey by Ruby Carr. And guys, I just, this book is just so amazing. I can't even begin to tell you how much this book means to me. It really made me feel a lot of emotions and work through a lot of feelings. This is a collection of poetry and for me poetry is, it helps me reflect on myself. Novels are an escape for me. They're entertainment, they're an escape, they're something to get lost in. Whereas poetry is where I go to find myself, both by reading it and by writing it. It is something that when I'm not writing my novels that I'm working on, I do write some poetry. Usually when I get stuck on novels, I end up writing poetry. And it's because usually there's too much going on in my life to get out of my own head. And poetry just helps me process what I'm feeling in, you know, kind of, you're still using beautiful language. You can say things metaphorically. It's where I find myself. It's where I process my own thoughts and emotions. And the first time I read this book, it really, really reached out to me. And um, the author is of Indian descent. It's something I've been thinking about doing anyway. So I think this would be a good book for me to revisit right now to process some hard feelings that I've been going through recently. So the other book that I've been thinking of reading is actually... The Kingdom of Back. Um, I have this one sitting on my shelf. So the author of this book, Marie Lu, is of Chinese descent. So I've been feeling a little bit conflicted about this book because it's actually about Mozart and his sister, which is obviously, you know, going to be based in Europe and centered around European characters. So although the author is of Asian descent, the characters are not, and I'm not really sure if that counts or not. A little conflicted about that. So I'd like to read this book as well this month if I have time because I still think it is good to support Asian authors. I was going to try to read it this month but it might sit on the back burner while I read some of the other books that actually revolve around more relevant kind of characters and themes. So I might end up reading this, I might not, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> So those are the books that I already own and now to get to the book haul section of this video I decided to order a handful of books from bookshop.org to help support one of my local small bookstores. I went ahead and I ordered a couple books that I knew I wanted to read for Asian Readathon so I'm really excited for this haul. So the first book is Orange and it is by Ishigo Takano. I hope I am saying that correctly. Um, I have heard so much about this. I think so one of the prompts for the Asian Readathon 
was to read a book that was suggested by a booktuber and the original booktuber who came up with the idea of Asian Readathon. She actually suggested this um, and I think that it sounds really cool. I've heard actually a lot of buzz about it since then. It sounds like apparently people just are loving this manga series. So I'm really excited to give it a chance. Um, it sounds like it has a really interesting premise. Basically, the main character is a girl who is in high school and she receives a letter from her future self telling her that she has to help this boy that is a new boy at her school and she has to save him from having a horrible fate. It sounds really interesting and I'm really excited to give it a try. So I hope I will definitely get to this this month and I hope it will be just as exciting as all the hype says it is. The next book I also ordered for this haul was I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Marine Gu. It is based around Korean dramas, which is really exciting because I've actually gotten really interested in K-dramas recently. I started watching a bunch of them on Netflix and guys, I love K-dramas so much. So this book is basically supposed to be about a girl who decides to sort of follow the rules of K-dramas to find love. And I think it sounds amazing. So I'm really, really excited to read this one. And I feel like it'll be interesting. I've never really read a novel about Korean characters or having to do more with Korea. Like, I just, I'm really excited. K-dramas are what really introduced me to kind of Korean culture and life. And so I'm really excited to see how this character sort of lives her own life by K-drama rules. It sounds like pretty like funny and cute. And I'm really excited to give this one a read this month. So the next book that I got, and this one's actually pretty funny. I, like weeks ago, before I had even heard of Asian Readathon, I took this like BuzzFeed quiz that was about like book suggestions. And I don't, I don't even remember what the topic of the quiz was. I don't know if it had to do with Asian authors. I don't even remember because it was before Asian Readathon. It was before I knew it existed. So I, I don't, I don't remember. All I know is that I took a picture of my result and my result was the suggestion of this book, I Love You So Mochi. And it sounds like such a cool read. It is by an author of Japanese descent. And I haven't really read any, I don't think I've read any novels that are by Japanese authors. Um, I've really only read manga, which, you know, is obviously by Japanese authors and artists. So I'm really excited to read this novel and see what this perspective is like. It sounds like it is about a Japanese American girl. She doesn't quite always get along with her mom and then she gets contacted by her grandparents, her mom's parents who live in Japan and they invite her to come visit them for the summer and She's never really experienced that side of her culture. It sounds like it's her kind of learning more about her roots and where she's from and where her mom is from. And it sounds like a really interesting book about self-discovery and I'm really excited to give this one a read. I'm so glad that I took that random BuzzFeed quiz and found out about this book because I've been wanting to read it since. The next book I ordered is A Wicked Fox by Kat Cho and I feel like a lot of people have been talking about this. This book has been like buzzing around booktube and bookstagram and I've been wanting to read it since I read the kind of bio about it. It sounds really interesting. It is about a girl. She is a gumiho which is a nine-tailed fox um, and survives by consuming the energy of men. <laughs> so basically she has to kill people. <laughs> Um, to survive but she only takes the lives of men who have committed terrible crimes this book takes place in Seoul so she ends up meeting a guy who is in danger and saving him and because she saves a man she loses what is like her fox bead is what they call it in the description and so basically she loses her sort of gumiho spirit and the fact that it's based in Seoul is really exciting to me because of the fact that I love K-dramas and it has become a very familiar setting. K-dramas have made me really want to go visit Seoul, which I never was never really on my radar before. I've wanted to go to Japan for years because I have a friend that lives there, but I never really thought about going to Korea. And I'm so excited because I want to now and it's just it's so cool to just have more travel goals. I don't know. I'm a big traveler. 
if you haven't gotten that yet by me talking about how I went and lived in England for a year, I actually love to travel and I've done a lot of traveling. So I can't wait till we can all travel again. But <laughs> um, anyway, so it sounds like basically she loses her fox spirit and she has to make some really tough decisions. And it also obviously has a romance. It just sounds really interesting. It says on the front, her life is in his hands. His heart is in hers. 100 days to choose who lives. So it sounds really like just, it's going to be so exciting to read. People have been raving about it. The second book is supposed to come out, I believe, in August. So I'm excited to read it now because I won't have to wait too long, at least for the sequel. <laughs> um, I can't wait. It sounds awesome. So yeah, that is my complete haul for this video. And I'm really excited to get more reading done this month and hopefully get through as much of these books as possible. I'm just really busy and and it's hard and I don't want to fail my first readathon but which is why I was being timid before and I just but I want to support this cause I want to show you guys that I am also here to stand up against you know xenophobia and bigotry and racism and I, I hate that that all is going on in the world right now and I just want to be supportive of these authors and these books I'm really excited to be a part of this readathon I just hope I can do it. <laughs> it's, it is a lot of pressure, but I feel like I have a really good kind of mix of books to read. And there are a lot of books available on audiobook that I have looked at reading as well. I'm still kind of deciding on what I will listen to as my audiobook for the month. Just it's been a really rough month for me so far. Sometimes you need to take some time to kind of process for yourself but sometimes it's just nice to get out of your own head. I really hope you are all doing well. I hope you're all healthy and staying safe in this very scary time that we're living in and I hope that you like my content and that you will like this video. Subscribe. Leave me comments below. Are you reading any of these books? Um, are you participating in the Asian Readathon? I'd be really excited to hear about it. Let me know what you think. Have a good rest of your week. Bye.